Hey guys, Steve Blair. Today we got a look at some patch notes. Got a new update for World of Warships Legends coming next Monday, June 21st. What I like to do with these videos, I'll give you the info, obviously, on what's coming, but I like to get your feedback. That helps me focus my attention on what I should be covering over the next update. So you let me know in response to what you hear here, what do you think is good, what do you think not so good. So we're going to jump right into it here. It says... Our uh, next update, heavily focused on American battleships. So what do we got here? Early access. Now, if you're new to the game, you don't know what early access is, there's going to be crates, American battleship crates. They're going to have a chance to spawn one of these battleships. It's going to be Tier 4, Tier 5, Tier 6, and currently not available, the Tier 7. So that won't be in the crate, but that'll be next update, five weeks from now. Then that Tier 7 will be available. What happens if you get a ship in the early access crate? It's part of your fleet. You can grind the XP out on it. You can put the mods on it. Next update, when the early access ends, the ship is still in your fleet as is. So let's say we get the tier five Tennessee, all right? But we don't get the tier six, North Carolina. So let's say we grind out the tier five, we get all the XP on there, get all the mods ready to go. Next update, come Monday, five weeks from now, Boom, we can get the uh, North Carolina, the Tier 6, right off the bat. Likewise, if we get the Tier 6, we can get the Tier 7 on day one. So that's how early access works. Like I said, we got Tier 5, Tennessee, Tier 4, Nevada, and Tier 6, North Carolina. And then the Tier 7, when the line's fully flushed out, it's going to be Kansas. So that looks pretty good here. Georgia on my mind is the name of the campaign. We got a Tier 7 American battleship. Uh, let's just give you a rundown. She offers relatively accurate and exceptionally hard-hitting 457 millimeter guns, but in a limited battery of six guns. Despite their limited number, they reload quickly for a battleship, and the Joge's AA among the best. Top speed, 33 knots, also significant. Uh, so that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good on paper here. We'll see what it goes here. Uh, looks like some sort of enhanced repair party cooldown as well so that's going to be a five-week campaign you know the drill there oklahoma project new bureau project and here we got not a legendary tier ship but a tier four nevada class battleship oklahoma so if you're new to the game you're just getting your bureau going my recommendation put your yamato on hold put the oklahoma in there you're going to have more resources to level that project up quicker and you're going to enjoy a tier four battleship much more than the legendary tier battleship so go with that and then also there's camos like the california we got nevada tennessee north carolina kansas oklahoma new mexico colorado new york that almost sounded like a howard dean rally speech for a minute there uh, we're going to south carolina and oklahoma and arizona and north dakota and new mexico and we're going to california and texas and new york and we're going to south dakota and oregon and washington and michigan and then we're going to Washington, D.C. to take back the White House. Yeah! Uh, those camels all are available at grade one. So I think when we did the California project, it was actually fully max camels. Unfortunately, it's just grade one here, but decent. So that's going to be good. Again, new players, you're definitely going to want a tier four battleship much more than a legendary tier battleship or destroyer. German aircraft carrier. So that's all early access, the Americans, and the Bureau, of course, is the Bureau. German aircraft carrier is not early access. We got a new airline of aircraft carriers. Uh, the Rhine, Weiser, and August von Percival. Those are the names of the carriers, apparently. We got AP bombs on these things, so I'm expecting torpedoes and AP bombs. No fires, of course, but pretty much every drop you do, citadels, ships... German aircraft carriers hated by the PC uh, community, except for the carrier players themselves. So hopefully they're a little bit better tuned on our version. Special commander coming, Hans Geisler. Base trade barrage. It's uh, actually a secondary gun. It speeds up the reload of the secondary guns for any ship type. So Bismarck commander, Celiac, Grober, uh, Massachusetts... The fists of the Golden Fist, NASA, any of those type of ships, you're going to want to put Geisler on your build there. It looks like an interesting build there. Maybe he's good for a carrier. I do want to point out, some of them recently told me that the Dewey commanders, uh, Dewey Son and George Dewey, actually are better 
carrier commanders for the respective carrier lines and I looked into it and I would agree they are probably better built so before you put a lot of points into uh, Geisler with the intent of him being your carrier commander at least give a good look at Deutsche Dewey okay see if his build per perhaps uh, appeals more to you I think if it's in line with the other two perhaps that's going to be the case but Geisler good for the secondary brawling build so that's an interesting commander there um, like the other carriers, it's going to take a little bit longer to grind these lines, so dig yourselves in there. If you're a carrier player, you know, either you got a lot of green XP or it's going to take a lot of games. Uh, let's see what else. Coinciding with the introduction of the German carriers, Tier 7 plane squadrons of all nations receive a new consumable, evasive maneuver, which <laughs> makes them immune to damage for a short period of time. Okay, well, okay. Interesting. Not uh, not what we were thinking we needed, <laughs> but okay. Uh, like I said, those are fully researchable. Oh, and spotting ribbons, they're going to be introduced in the game. They're going to start off for carriers. So how that works, you spot the ship, you get the spotting ribbon. That's going to help these carrier players understand the role of spotting. Some of this background footage, we're going to be focusing on killing destroyers, but also hopefully some spotting action here. That's the main strength of the carriers. Uh, we're going to talk about what else is coming up with the carriers on a moment here, which uh, I'll get my thoughts on. Arena Battle Season 4. You know the drill here. We've got a Tier 4 arena, but there's a new component called the Arms Race, and this is going to be, well, it's a new mode added on top of the new arena format. So whether there's arena and Arms Race, I'm not 100% sure, but there's kind of consumables around the map. Like, I think that Space Limited Edition one, I didn't actually get time to play more than like two games on that one but those of you that played that one remember you could go around the map and get can like boost to your reload or whatever health um, so that's what that looks like it says the rewards for that i'm gonna have battleship crates usn battleship crates steel v bucks as we call it uh that'll be available for your top 50 percent and higher so a little bit more v bucks going to your massachusetts still grinding away on that one and it says also you, you get your top 15 games per day going to your leaderboard. So you can't grind, 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 and run all the way up. You know, you can still play a lot of games and continue to improve your score, but not by that much after 15 games. You're just going to be basically knocking off your lowest score and then adding on to that by improving your game. So interesting format there. We'll check that out. Status widget. Been up in the main updating the main menu to give you a better understanding of your progress. So this looks like a UI thing. It's going to tell you where you're at with the campaign, bureau, and then looks like gives you an overview of your commander resources and currency or whatever like that. So um, that's fine. Balance changes. French battleships received the Armament Durability Mod 1. Modification that increases the HP of their gun turrets by 50%, while reducing the ship's HP by 5%. Mod can be installed by slot one, usually where you'd find your uh, aiming systems mod. So, interesting option there. You know, the main weakness for the French battleships like Richelieu and uh, Jean Bart potentially are their weak turrets. So, that could be interesting at the higher tiers. Blind Rage base trade of Arthas the Cold. Now, that's a niche war hammer, I believe, was the, the collab commander. Not a lot of people have him, but he's actually going to get his... Uh, Damage increased by 20% instead of 6% when the fighter consumable is active. So that one I might check out because I remember when I got the commander, I was like, this could be really strong. And then I saw it was less damage than the battleship. Uh, so 20%. So if that's worth looking into, I'll check it out. But uh, I know a lot of you guys don't have that one. And then here we got some carrier buffs. What are we doing here? HE bombs of the Langley getting a 5% damage buff and a 2% fire starting chance buff. Same thing with Lexington. Maximum damage, 5% uh, buff, and then 2% fire starting damage. I don't really understand that. I'm going to talk about my thoughts on the carriers here at the moment. But uh, legendary ships now match type to type in standard battles, meaning you should have an equal number of destroyers, battleships, and cruisers of similar tiers. Unless the matchmaking process takes more than four minutes or there are uneven divisions present. This is in response to people constantly complaining about uh, uneven matchmaking. And... Buyer beware. I hope this doesn't screw up Legendary Tier even more than it already is. A Legendary Tier is a disaster right now just based on who they're letting in. But 
every single time they've put the thumb on the matchmaking in this game, it's been a disaster. And every single time they've put the thumb on the game, it's been in response to people complaining. So I hope to God this isn't a problem. But basically, this is how you get these 2v2 games. You go on Reddit, you see these goofy matches where people are like, a lot of fun here, 2v2 or 3v3 or something like that. Or you're going to wait four minutes for a game. It's the same guys saying, why do we have three destroyers in that team, only one over here? Suck it up and get creative. You know, sometimes you're going to be at a disadvantage. But now we're putting the thumb on the matchmaking. I think this is a disaster. Uh, I hope to God they got it ironed out. Because if not, the legendary cheer is going down. Uh, so we'll we'll find out there. But you guys got to be careful because they do respond to your complaints. And like they torpedoed the Yamato test event when that was going on. Uh, this happened one other time. I can't remember. And now this, this... I hope they got it worked out, because the other two times they've done this, it's been an absolute disaster. Uh, yeah, and then some bug fixes. Premiums, they got two new green XP ships. Benham, 500k. Massachusetts, 750k. Massachusetts, great. Benham, eh. Some people like it, but not me. Tier 4, French, or no, French. Florida Battleship. Uh, that's the American, of course. That'll be available for doubloons. So just one new ship for doubloons here. Uh, but my thoughts on the carriers, you know, I got some footage of me attacking destroyers. Carriers are extremely powerful spotting, just on their own, just spotting. If you understand how to do it, that can be a huge thing, especially late in the game when the destroyers go down. You don't have to deal any damage. You can keep all the ships split for your team. They can shoot for free, and then there's nothing to shoot back. So the spotting alone, powerful. The fact that if you know what you're doing and you hover over these destroyers and kill them uh, early in the game while your destroyers hopefully survive, extremely powerful. These two things alone that the carriers are capable of make them powerful in the hands of people that understand how to apply their, uh, their resources. And now I hope to God they're not sitting here looking at the average damage saying, okay, why are the destroyers, the cruisers, the battleships doing more damage on average than the carriers we got to continue to boost this damage until it's equal that would be a disaster okay you got a ship that cannot be shot back at unless they're not paying attention uh to what's going on in the game and yeah they they can remove destroyers they can spot and we can do some damage while we're at it it's like we're playing destroyers we're capping bases we're countering destroyers and if we happen to hit some tourists while we're doing that cool same thing with these things okay and i i'm not a glorious carrier player by any means i've had some burners in this i've seen some scores from some of my friends that play this game that the damage is out of control and now we're getting buffs and we're making we're giving them consumables where they can have runs that they can't be countered i mean come on guys let's we need to start speaking up and saying let's let's stop buffing a class where the average amount of games played is 40 compared to you know i've played 3,000 plus destroyer games, 3,000 plus car or cruiser games, 3,000 plus battleship games, and about 50 carrier games at the most. Okay, I don't need, I should, my damage output on the carriers should be nowhere near those other classes. My score should be nowhere near those other classes. And yet I've had burners, and I have a lot of games recently where I feel like I've got the, the hang of the carriers, and I feel like I can own the destroyers. As long as I got people on my team that are not completely inept, which, you know, sometimes that happens, uh, then the destroyers are wiped off on the enemy team and the game is won. You know, I'm starting to, as a bad carrier player, feel like I have a lot of control over the game as the carrier. And that's not good because there's going to be carrier specialists who get thousands of games. I've gone against a couple carriers that absolutely dominated me and my team. I see the potential. We got to stop buffing them until we get more experience in this class and we can see what they're actually capable of, not how they're being performed by a complete, you know, 98% of the people playing them, completely noobs, myself included. We do not need to balance the class based on that. That's my thoughts on that, guys. That's my thoughts on this update. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Let me know in the comments. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel. Consider subscribing. We've got lots of World of Warships and it's coming all the time for you. And that'll do it. Peace.